long-term relationship that, that works uh, you know, just as well as your, your marriage does. Um, so, uh, so in any case, uh, once you found your co-founders and business partners, it's also important to find advisors and mentors, right? Because there may be some, there may still be some, say, limitations that your team doesn't have, and you also need to need a network that you need to build around the, the business. So, I'll talk a little bit more about what to look for in co-founders uh, and and ad advisors and mentors. Um, but then, once you've done that, the, the question is, okay, well, what problem are you going to solve? Uh, a pro one thing to think about is. Um, you know, you know, we're all at uh, different places uh, in the world, and different places in society, and, and, and different uh, you know domains, subject areas of expertise. Uh, one thing you might want to think about is who can I who can I directly help that's around me, right? Because if you you want to help uh, a set of folks that are just in a completely different domain or in a completely different area, it, you know that's there's a lot of um, uh, problems and impediments that you need to solve when you need to get a business off the ground. And if you want to minimize the number of of those uh, impediments and whatnot, uh, one thing you you should look for is who are you close to? What problems are they having, right? And if you've built up trust and honesty and integrity, uh, and people believe in you within your network, you're much better positioned to help them solve problems. So help them solve their problems first, and then move on to larger and larger numbers of people and, and other networks. Um, uh, and, and then finally, once you've figured out, well, who you can help and who are going to be your customers, these kinds of things, take those people's problems, make them your own. Uh, get really passionate about solving them and invest more time and energy and intellect than they, than they have the luxury to invest themselves. And you'll find that they'll be more than happy to pay you as customers. So um, let me chat a little bit about uh, what to look for when you uh, work with people. Um, so I mentioned uh, that you know, when, you're, when you're looking for um, uh, co-founders and bu business partners, uh, you'll, you'll effectively be, um, well, you, working very closely with them. You'll be uh, married to them, not in any romantic sense of the word, of course, um, but uh, you'll be spending a lot of time with them, just as, you say, you spend a lot of time with your spouse. And so it's important that there, that there be a lot, of, um, a lot of things that gel about that relationship. Uh, you all need to have deep trust with each other. There's going to be bank accounts that need to be shared. There's going to be offices that need to be shared. There's going to be all kinds of things where you just have to have deep amounts of uh, trust. Um, you should, uh, as a team, have similar values, goals, philosophies, uh, et cetera, uh, complementary skill sets, uh, compatible personalities and work styles, right? Compensate for your limitations. I mentioned some of these things already. So I'm going to breeze through it. Um, in addition, I mentioned, um, I mentioned advisors and investors. And let me just um, talk a little bit about that. So uh, w what are advisors and, um, and mentors? They are people that know you. They are people that know your subject area. Uh, they are also people that also, uh, you know, know about more than just your subject area. Um, they should, to an extent, serve as an extension of your network and help you, uh, help you build your business in various ways. Um, they should be incented to do so properly, right? So, for instance, when we were starting Dacient, uh, you know, we're starting a, uh, a software company, a security company. Uh, you know, an open source uh, software company. And so uh, we, on our co-founding team, had, exp had expertise in some of these areas, but uh, not as much expertise in others. So we found advisors to, to compensate for that, right? So, um, so, so um, just something to, to, to keep in mind. Um, another thing that advisors and mentors can help you do is uh, recruit people. You know, once you've got your initial team together, if you want to grow your business, uh, you're going to need to you're going to need to find people. And recruiting is an important activity. And once you get running with your business, you'll find that there's just so many other things to do that uh, the more people that you have helping you look out for, uh, you know, other people that may want to join or whatnot, uh, the, the the more they can help leverage your time. Um, one way to um, you know, compensate and incentivize advisors is by giving them, say, stock, but that might not be the right solution for every business. You could decide to give them some kind of a profit share or uh, you know, give them, uh, you know, give the, I mean, even give them a license to sell some of your products in, in another area, right? So there, there's various ways where you can work with uh, people. Um, so, so that's one category of people. The other category of people uh, to, that you need to work with is uh, investors. And, when you're looking for investors, um, you know, the, 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 the money is important that they invest in your company, but I'd say that's not the primary thing. Uh, the primary thing to look out for when you look for investors is look for people that can help you build the business, right? They should have maybe contacts to other companies in the same space. They should have uh, distribution relationships. They should have uh, all kinds of other all kinds of other things, and you know basically except for the except for the friends and family type investors that you might have, 
uh, you actually should not let them invest money in your company or in your venture unless they can help you. Uh, the reason that's important is because if they can help you, then whatever money that they give you and invest, uh, they'll be able to help you multiply that. If, they, uh, if they're not in a position to help you, then, then they're just giving you cash and it's very hard to make forward progress. The other thing you'll find is that um, your business will actually be more valuable to those people that can help you. You'll find that they'll want to invest more, they'll want to give you a better valuation, et cetera. So, uh, so, so, so look for people that can help you build your business as investors. Um, so anyhow, so that's a, a little bit on finding, um, you know, finding people to work with. Uh, another thing that you have to do is, well, come up with your quote unquote uh, business plan. Now when I say business plan, I'm, uh, what I'm not saying is go out and write a 30 page document about what you think you're going to do because it's going to change. So, uh, so instead of doing that, there's rather a couple key questions that you need to have answers to when, when, getting your entrepreneur, uh, when getting your entrepreneurial effort off the ground. And the answers to these things may change, but, uh, but at least the initial set of questions that you have to answer are, well, who are your customers? Whose problems are you going to help solve? And why are they going to pay you? Um, you need to think about very deeply, you know, well, what do they need? Uh, what is the product or service that you're going to build that's going to help them address their need? Exactly how will your product or service address their need? Uh, why will your product or service do that in a better way than other potentially competitive products and services on the market? Um, and uh, you know, uh, really understand, well, why will they pay you as opposed to somebody else? You know? it, could be, it could be that you provide better service. It could be that you provide the solution faster. It could be that you do it at a lower expense. There's many, many such reasons. It could be that you solve um, you know, a problem in a more customized way than other folks might, right? So there's uh, a lot of um, uh, good answers to this, but you should, you should make sure you deeply understand that. You should, of course, understand you know, who are your competitors, what is your differentiation, because when, when you're in a conversation with a customer, they're going to be throwing questions at you, right? away. So you need to have the answers right away, otherwise you're going to lose the sale. So, uh, so, so just some things to keep in mind. To, to just give you one example, um, when we were starting Dacient, I'll give you an answer for, for some of these questions around our business. Um, Dacient, uh, as a company, uh, our, our customers are websites. Um, they are, in particular, uh, websites that uh, have revenue streams coming in, either for, say, e-commerce sales or from advertising on their website. And what we provide is uh, malware protection for, uh, for their website. So uh, there's been many, many, so malware is malicious software. Uh, many of you may have heard of viruses. And there's a lot of good products that can run on PCs, right? Your desktop computers or laptop computers to protect uh, consumers uh, and, and even some you know, corporate business users from, from, from getting infected. But there, uh, prior to starting Dacian, there was no software that you could run on a web server that will not only protect that server from getting infected, but when people with their web browsers access content on that web server, they, uh, you, know, you don't want a virus to infect all the people that are accessing your web server. And so the, 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 the issue is that over the past 18 months, what's happened is that the amount of malicious software that's getting spread via web servers distributing them has increased by uh, over 600 percent so, and it's just gotten so bad that the big search engines the big browsers uh, like uh,